evening, everybody. On behalf of the school community, I'm happy to welcome everybody here this evening and offer our sincerest gratitude for the sponsorship of this event. I've observed many wonderful traditions here at St. Elizabeth's during my short tenure, and this is certainly a meaningful and important addition. There's an old adage that says, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, education certainly is changing. But one element that really remains constant is the wonderful people who have and continue to contribute to our school's success. Through their efforts, dedication, and commitment, we have been able to provide a Catholic education to St. Elizabeth students for 90 years. It is both humbling and an honor to be part of such a fine tradition. I hope you enjoy a wonderful evening, and I'm going to introduce to you a very funny man, Bob Corner. <laughs> well, uh, for those who don't, do not know me, uh, my name is Bob Quarter. I uh, grew up in the, the Waldo area. I've uh, been in the parish a long time. Actually, um, parents are neighbors of Twinners. They lived right behind us. Uh, Zonka's right down the block. Rooster's right behind there. So it's uh, good to see everybody tonight. And it's a lot of fun. Um, currently living now in Waldo. Uh, I have two children. And one's in preschool, pre-K here. And another one just started preschool. So we're just getting back into the, the school side of things and the, and the fun stuff. So. Also attended uh, St. Elizabeth's, went from uh, kindergarten all the way through eighth grade here. Um, graduated in 87, and I say that with a, a little bit of sarcasm. I think it was, uh, if I put it into words, a relief from both sides. Um, <laughs> glad you came. Don't hurry back. Um, tonight, uh, it's a great night. So when I got the call from Carrie to come back, it was, it was a nice surprise and, and a pleasure to be here. Um, I know a few of the inductees, and and brought back a lot of memories. But you talked to me about the, uh, the Hall of Fame, and I thought, wow, what a great idea. I, didn't, you know, I was just kind of hearing about it in the last year or so, and what a great way to honor um, people that have given so much here and to you know, say thank you. Um, I kind of you know, related to they've touched so many lives and had an impact of you know, when you meet somebody out and a friend comes up and says, you know, remember that time, or remember that place we were at, and you say, yeah, I kind of got an idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I kind of remember that. But for them, it's vivid. They, they know exactly that moment. They remember exactly what you said. And, and that's what it was like for us who interacted with, you know, the Henri's tonight. You know, they, memories that are coming back now from being down here and, and everything are, are very, very vivid. But for them, they don't realize how close, you know, and how much lives they've, t they've touched. So the Hall of Fame is, is a great thing, and I'm, I'm proud that well, St. Elizabeth has started doing this. <clears throat> tonight... Um, just getting to a little history of St. Elizabeth School Hall of Fame. It was established in 2009 as a way to recognize individuals who positively impacted our children's future through personal commitment to St. Elizabeth. This is our third class that will be inducted, so they're just kind of getting started with this. And I'd like to list the, uh, the inductees before. And if you're here, please stand uh, as you hear your name. Carol Lynn. Joan Ball, Sandy Nickel, Dan Walsh, Arlene Davis, Father Dan Schneider, and Chris Sanka. I'd also like to, we'd like to thank the, the Hall of Fame uh, nominating committee and, and for all their work in selecting the honorees and the planning of this event. Uh, Connie and Pat Twinner, John Harris, Denny Liston, Sandy Nickel, Kathy Glenn, and our newest member, Marta Wil Wilmington. Big round of applause for them. They do a lot of work. Before I start, I have to share this. I had three sons. And after they all went through high school and college, they said, you're missing the best pizza in Kansas City, Waldo Pizza. And we've been going there ever since. And our baby is going to be 36 years old. <laughs> Let me start off by saying, Father Bruce, Sisters of St. Joseph, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to present Phil Bourne for induction into the St. Elizabeth's Hall of Fame. Oops. <laughs> Hope that's not a sign, Phil. <laughs> We should indeed be honored to have Phil with us tonight because I've heard through the grapevine 
but he has declined numerous opportunities to be recognized. Just who is Phil Bourne and how did he become the very generous owner of Waldo Pizza? Let us take a look at Phil's story. Phil Bourne, born and raised in St. Louis, attended Christian Brothers High School, graduated from the University of Missouri in 1974 with a journalism degree. After graduation, partnered up with a boyhood buddy and opened a record store in Columbia. Business dropped off after five years when the disco phase died. <laughs> As a result of that, the partnership ended, so he settled with his partner who inherited the store. Phil then moved to Kansas City in 1979 to look for employment. He worked for various record distributors and record stores for the next 14 to 15 years. During that period, he found himself with extra time on his hands. So in 1991, he came to Waldo Pizza and took on a part-time job helping in the kitchen and delivering pizzas. In 1993, the original owners who opened the store in 1987 wanted out. Having a brother in St. Louis in the restaurant business and loving it, he decided to make an offer to buy Waldo Pizza. Deal was consummated, and this is a great day, on April Fool's Day, <laughs> April 1st, 1993, and he was in business for himself. Having been blessed with parents that valued education, that had put him through Catholic schools and a college education, Phil felt it only, Phil felt it only appropriate to give back. Thus, his first move as an owner was to give all schools a 50% discount. I understand he was going to start that with Catholic schools, but a lot of schools, Boone Center came to him. He just opened it up for all schools on any and all purchases, and he frequently gave all of them discount gift cards when requested. For Saint's, this includes all areas, departments, groups, or associations attached to the school or church. So, people out there in the audience, please help me out to prove this point. If you're involved with any of these organizations I'm about to list, and have been a recipient or exposed to Waldo Pizza, please stand up when I mention them and remain standing. First off, the parish ministries and staff, please stand up if any of you are here. The faculty and school staff, please stand up. CPTA, if you're a member or associate or have been with that, please stand up. The Parish Council, please stand up. The Athletic Committee, coaches or event staff, if you've been involved in any of those capacities, please stand up. The Stewardship Development Committee, please stand up if you're here. The Yes I Can program, if you're here, please stand up. The Finance Committee, the Knights of Columbus, Friendship Club, St. Vincent de Paul, the Fire Organization, the Youth Group, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, or any other St. Elizabeth organization that I've yet to mention. Lectors, anyone, please stand up. Some of you aren't standing up, and I look out there, and I know a lot of you are involved in other organizations and committees. I only listed about 15 out of the 45 I could have. Continuing, under the leadership of Phil Bourne, while making these generous discounts to St. Elizabeth's for the better part of 18 years, there is no way to put a dollar figure on how much this has meant to us here at St. Elizabeth's. In addition, because of his background and dedication to journalism, Phil has daily editions of the Kansas City Star delivered to the school and has for the last 18 years. Now I'll tell you what, I'm going to let, let's learn about another side of Phil Bourne from a couple members of his staff, one that's going to come forward, Annie and Jen, Jenny Harris put this together, Jenny Harris Weidler, and Jenny's going to come up and deliver something regarding her boss, because Ann and Jenny worked for Phil at the Waldo Pizza. So Jenny, if you'll come forward, please.
This would be a lot better than what I just said. <laughs> uh, my name is Jenny Weidler. I also am a graduate of St. Elizabeth, uh, 1989. Woo! Right in the room. Oh, PB. You're a really good sport. I would have never imagined uh, 14 years ago when my husband, Pete, also a graduate of St. Elizabeth, uh, we asked to work for you one night a week in exchange for pizza. <laughs> he did not agree. He said he had to pay us, but we were willing to work for pizza. Never knew I'd be working full time for you now and that we'd be here this evening. Before I divulge some amazing little known facts about Phil Bourne, I must say how wonderful it is for me to be here at this event, also acknowledging two truly outstanding women who shaped my life tremendously. In this room, as a matter of fact, sitting cross-legged on the floor with a tote on my lap. <laughs> Mrs. Burns and Ms. Marlowe, your dedication and patience and love as educators are well beyond worth. <laughs> and back to Phil. It's really interesting to me that we are honoring a non-practicing anything at this Catholic school event. However, when I consider the Christ skills that we hold our children and hopefully ourselves to, there is no one I know who better exemplifies these traits than Phil Born. As Connie said, Phil learned his business from the ground up as a delivery driver while maintaining a full-time job. What a display of initiative and hard work. And believe me, being a delivery driver is often a thankless task. It requires a deep reserve of patience and perseverance. Uh, especially when held at gunpoint for a relatively small purse. <laughs> I think those early experiences as a driver really shaped who he has become as an employer. He clearly appreciates the contributions of each of the members of his staff. He recognizes the value of his team with several profit sharing incentives. I cannot begin to explain how he organizes the information necessary to calculating these shares. All I know is it's intricate, and very well thought out, and I for one really enjoy it. He fosters the talents of his team by offering members greater responsibility when they display the capacity. When earned, his faithfulness in them is irrevocable. That often requires a tremendous amount of forgiveness and even more patience. Phil not might appreciate this recognition, but the man has unclogged more toilets at Waldo Pizza than anyone else in its history. His sense of stewardship, care for that which he has been given, even when it is uncomfortable and perhaps disgusting, is the absolute tops. Way before being green was cool and conveniently curbside, Phil had recyclables hauled to bridging the gap every week, and he's been buying local way before it's been a thing. Um, have any of you ever noticed the music selection on the jukebox at the WP? It, if you haven't, it's absolutely fabulous. And that's his doing. He might get hooked on a particular artist at a given moment or for a while, but the man loves, loves music. And if need be, he will use music to control his employees. It should also be noted that uh, he has the most lovely baritone, baritone voice. I would be remiss not noting his humor here as well. Many of you may have seen the 1985 pennant that he displays at the restaurant. The one that says that the Cardinals won. <laughs> ha ha! You wish, Phil. In addition to his fine sense of humor, the man loves baseball. And who can blame him for root, root, rooting for his home team? What we really are recognizing this evening, though, is Phil's generosity, as Connie explained. He has given so much to this community. What I hope everyone here understands, which Connie helped illustrate as well, is that he extends this generosity to every school, church, not-for-profit organization in the metropolitan area. I think that St. Eve's was the first to receive this benefit, but they certainly aren't the only or the last. Phil's generosity is truly universal, and you all know the word Catholic means universal, and that's him, universal. Thank you, Phil, for everything you do for us. In closing, let me just say that even though Phil Bourne through Waldo Pizza is most generous to other schools, organizations, and charities, 
Tonight, he is ours and ours alone in our chance to give him a big thank you and welcome him into our Hall of Fame. Please welcome our first business partner to the St. Elizabeth's Hall of Fame, Phil Bourne. Will you please come forward? very much. <clears throat> Continue on tonight um, with uh, honoring the Sisters of St. Joseph. Uh, back in 1922, just a few years before I graduated from here, <laughs> prompted by the need for the Catholic education in this area, two sisters began an elementary instruction in two small rooms in the back of the original church. St. Elizabeth's Catholic School welcomed its first 52 members in 1922. The first graduating class consisted, though, of a mere seven students. So, looks like I was lucky I wasn't educated by the sisters. Wouldn't have made it out of here. <laughs> here to help out and say a few words about it is Carrie Matt.
still have that funding model. Um, truly by the generosity of the parishioners has made that possible and has means that we can give a Catholic education to any family desiring it, regardless of their financial ability to pay. So again, that inclusivity. And then finally, actually in the classroom, through our partnership with the Foundation for Inclusive Religious Education, or FIRE, and our Student Resource Center, we do everything we can within our financial and human resources to reach out to students at all learning levels. So we really are still holding true to those values today. The second thing that I noticed was, sorry, I have this iPad, I'm not quite used to all the technology. Um, <laughs> but enable others to assume a more active responsibility for continuing the mission of Jesus. And isn't that all why we're all here, really? Um, two things we're doing this year in the school is that Pat Kolesh, our principal, has challenged all the students to do 50 hours of community service um, in order to achieve the Presidential Service Award. And so our current students are being challenged. We've even, with the youngest ones, we've talked about, you can do small things like, you know, make a card for a baby that's been baptized. And the, I got one a couple months ago, and they said, congratulations on your baptism. And you opened it up and said, are you a boy or a girl? Check <laughs> one. <laughs> so it was really cute. And just showing the kids that, um, as, as I frequently tell them, small, uh, God does great things with small acts. So that's something we're always emphasizing. We also started a school of service where I have the honor, truly the honor, of going in and teaching stewardship lessons at every single classroom. What's coming out of that is, is incredible as well. But of course, that's not new. Over the 90 years that we've been here, uh, that's always been the norm for St. Elizabeth. And I could tell you, alumni after alumni, that it's out there in the world, literally the world, Peace Corps, doing medical missions, uh, things like that, that they're truly living out that, that part of the mission of the church. In fact, I calculated it today, of 2,000 alums, and then about 400 more kids that will be alums at some point. So um, it's an honor and a privilege to carry on the tradition that you all have started. And um, I know I feel blessed to be a part of that, and I know the teachers here um, do as well. So I'm so excited to announce you, Sister Rosemary. <laughs> uh, Sister Rosemary uh, is a regular at our Saturday uh, 4.30 Mass, as well as our 7 a.m. Masses on a daily basis, and she is here to say a few words. the rest of the sisters stand up here too but they won't do it so they're, they're, they're so shy I cannot tell you what this means to us 145 years ago we came to Kansas City and opened St. Teresa's Academy downtown yay we even beat the Publix against all the city fathers advice we moved out beyond the plaza, <laughs> way out beyond the streetcar yeah. to 56th and Main. Oh, no. And it was oh, at boy. that building. Hello. Hello. Yeah. It was at that building. Oh, my Thank you, dear. That thing's called Good Jordan. Good Jordan. Good Jordan. Good Jordan. Good Jordan. Good Jordan. Good And it was in that building that our sisters here lived took the old streetcar with their book bags and their lunches and their lesson plans and their whatever they had planned for the day came up. Can you imagine the people on the streetcar wondering, who is this? <laughs> came up here to Waldo, came down the street, taught their classes, went back and got on the streetcar and went back home. But let me tell you, dear friends, we never did it alone. We did it with other teachers. We did it with the parents. God bless you, parents. <laughs> we did it with the help of this entire community, and we could not have done it 
without you. So the remnant here of us, <laughs> <laughs> we thank you very much. Hey, well, we're back on. It's a Duracell, it should hold out, hopefully. Uh, in appreciation for everything the Sisters of St. Joseph have contributed to St. Elizabeth's, Father Bruce would also like to present the Sisters with a special subject rosary. And we also have a brick engraved in honor of the Sisters that will be placed in a special section of the Hall of Fame between the school and the church. So, again, thank you again for everything you've done. Our next honoree is Miss Jenny Burns. Mrs. Burns taught third grade here for 10 years. And I can tell you, I, I had Mrs. Burns and um, right down the other end of the hall there. And coming out of second grade, you always wanted to know who was gonna be your you know, homeroom teacher. And it was for me gonna be Mrs. Anka or Mrs. Burns. So being neighbors with Miss Anka, knowing Miss Anka, I was like, well, you know, that could be fun, but you know, she's on to me. You know, I'm not gonna get away with much. <laughs> you know, knows my folks, you know, so. Sure enough, first come, uh, come first day of school, and I have Miss Anka, which is great. I was excited, but you know, I thought about it more and more, and I thought, you know what? I bet Miss Burns had a method here. You know, she thought she could put me over Miss Anka's class, who direct. But who had a direct connection with my folks, so you know anything I did, walking around the block, boom, I'm updated, I'm out, you know, I'm in trouble. So you know, not going to get away with much. She could have me for individual classes. I'd rotate back and forth, you know. But at the end of the day, she could scoot me off to Mrs. Anka, and then Miss Anka would have me for the rest of the day. So I think Mr. Burns knew, knew what she was doing there. Also, another thing that was was fun to talk about was how she used to tell us how to spell friend and how to remember it. And she was like, I'll be your friend until the end. And helped everybody learn how to spell the word. And that couldn't be more true. Miss Burns is a, a wonderful lady. Just love her so much. So up here to say a few more words. And who knows her very well? Talk beside her. Hall of Fame inductee from last year is Mrs. Zonka. St. Elizabeth community from the early 70s to the late 80s. Wow, were we ever blessed. 
when they asked you, or whether you came and asked to be a part of our community. Oh, listen, <laughs> I still hear stories and all sorts of good things about Mrs. Burns. <laughs> Jimmy was loved and respected by parents, students, and staff. The parents of her students knew how dedicated she was to her students. She was always very positive and encouraging and expected everyone to do their personal best. Right, Bob? Right. <laughs> right, Mark? Everybody else that had her here? The parents knew this and they trusted her and her judgment 100% where their children were concerned. Because it was like sending them in with their mom. You just couldn't ask for a better teacher. As a co-teacher, we worked together for 10 plus years. Nobody, and I mean it, nobody could ever have had a better teammate. After a while, we seemed to kind of know what one another was thinking. You know, you'll start out something, a phrase, and then they'll finish it for you. The way she would work with her students was a true inspiration. You never heard her. It was open down here. You could hear me, <laughs> but you couldn't hear Mrs. Burns. The children could, but others couldn't. We often stayed after school and worked together on plans for the next day. Um, sometimes we'd meet up here on Saturdays and go over things. And on occasion, we'd even go up to 77th and Warno to our favorite, remember our favorite? Taco, Taco Bell, <laughs> right. <laughs> we'd go up there and we'd get our usual and we'd sit and we'd talk about the things we were going to do. And on occasion, my youngest, Annie, was privileged to go along with us and she'd be at the next table. <laughs> Just in case there was something we didn't want her to hear. When you moved from second grade to third grade, you wanted to be with Mrs. Burns. She was just that type of teacher. And like I said, with the open space, you just knew all of the teachers. And so you knew that once you were out of second grade, as Bob said, you'd get either or. But there was always something very special about my dear friend Jenny. And I wasn't hurt. Because if I would have been one of them, I would have wanted to be in that class too, trust me. <laughs> she was always very supportive to everyone on the staff. Whenever I see former students, they'll always say, do you still see Mrs. Burns? How's Mrs. Burns doing? And I think that says a lot for the type of individual that she is, and how much she meant to her students. Some of our fun activities that we did here were spelling bees, board races, a game of buzz, and that's just naming a few. My daughter Annie, when I was telling her about this upcoming event and that I was going to say a few things about Jenny, she said, I still remember some of the things. And she said, matter of fact, one thing I remember, my spelling book, <laughs> her third grade spelling book. And in the back, she has, we'd always have the test pages here in the back. And she got a hundred on every single one of them. And so at the end of the year, she was rewarded with... Taco Bell. No! <laughs> she was rewarded with a Coke glass full of Hershey's Kisses 
with pixie sticks in them. And another one of the memorable events, and maybe Bob, some of the others will remember this. Every year at Valentine's, we'd have a butterfly, and we'd have a butterfinger in the middle, and then we, each student would receive a Valentine. <coughs> But I also want to say a big thank you goes out to the Burns family. Ed was a tremendous support for Jenny when she was up here. And there were times that we left, well, she left Ed at home to do whatever, and I left Frank at home to do whatever for dinner while, you know, we collaborated on some things. And I know her sons and daughters were very, very supportive of her also. You know, Jenny, I just, I just can't say enough good things about you. I paid you. <laughs> well, not yet you haven't. <laughs> so would you like to come up and say a few words to all these people who I know love you as dearly as I do and are so thankful that you were a part of the St. Elizabeth community and of our lives. This room is so special to those of us who taught here. It seems unusual to see people of your age. <laughs> when we were used to just children, it was a great room. It was filled with great children who were backed by great parents. <coughs> when I read of all the problems in the newspapers, about the various schools, and they discuss this problem and that problem. And I think, get with the parents. Try to help them. There's a lot of parents who don't have the opportunities that we all had. The children reflected that. Well, I know you're anxious to hear the story of my life. <laughs> well, as of now, I'm 84, and uh, of course I'm waited on by my children, <laughs> but I graduated from Loretto Academy, then I went to the Loretto Sisters College in St. Louis, Webster College. Fantastic. So then I came back to Kansas City to look for a job as a teacher. Back in those days, you needn't bother to apply at the Catholic schools. The sisters were there for us. Thank you, sisters. <laughs> So 
I went to find a job. And I went out to Independence, Independence, Missouri. And I was talking with the interview man, and he said, well, I see you always gone to Catholic schools. Would you know how to teach in a public school? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I think I can handle that. <laughs> Luckily, none of the children were converted. <laughs> so, I lived at 39th and Holmes with my folks. That's right on the edge, looking into Gilbo. And I would get on the bus in the morning, go up to Troost, and get the bus going in town, go down, I think, to 12th or 13th, get off, and get on another bus to go to Independence. Nothing unusual. That's the way we all did it. So I taught there for a couple of years, and then suddenly I heard that out at Christ the King, they were looking for a kindergarten teacher, and they would consider a lay person, as we called ourselves. <laughs> so I went out to apply, and sure enough, I was one of the first two or three lay teacher, people who were teachers in the Kansas City Catholic school. Great! So I had my own room. Four sisters had the other rooms. Every night after school, they would remind me a treat was waiting for me <laughs> in the sisters' living room. Coffee, rolls, whatever. However, one little boy had gone home I think he was a first or second grader. And he said to his mom, there is the strangest person on our playground. <laughs> Alert the mother immediately. What do you mean? What does she do? What does she look like? Oh, I don't know. She acts like a teacher on the playground. <laughs> but she doesn't wear a sister suit. <laughs> so, that was, I say I was one of the first lay teachers in Kansas City. With a deep bow and tip of the hat to all the sisters who preceded us and taught us. So then, in the meanwhile, having nothing else to do, I met Ed Burns, who of course was so into education and getting federal funding for the schools, etc. So, first of all, we had our family. We got married first. We're <laughs> getting that. Good point, Daddy. So, After a big, elegant wedding, <laughs> Ed and I conceived and had, in this order, three boys, Mark, Greg, Tim, and then God rewarded us and sent us two girls, Peggy and Amy. <laughs> So, moving along and realizing in time, these five children, all born within six years, would be into high school tuition, college tuition. I was going back to work. So, at that time, there were more lay people in the system, and I came to St. Elizabeth and was hired. And I had the grade that I loved so dearly, third grade. The children are old enough to know what you're talking about, 
and they're old enough to want to go on and learn a lot more. In this very room, we had two first grades, two second grades, two third grades. All those children, six teachers, three paraprofessionals who would help work with the children. It was absolutely a marvelous experience. We teachers enjoyed each other. We could share information that would help the next year. So we had a great, wonderful time here. So after a while, I was still the bus rider, riding hither and to to the schools. I thought it was time for me to maybe get closer to O'Hara, where all our children would be going. So I decided I better get at a school closer. It so happened right across the driveway from O'Hara was a school where I could teach third grade. And I loved it there very much. I'm thinking about tonight, the outstanding thing through the years is the support the parents gave. They worked with their children. They were just a marvelous gathering. So with much for which to be thankful, I love this room, I love this parish, I love the parents. And one thing I hadn't thought about as I was getting prepared to be a teacher was that you would run in to former students along the way. So I will be somewhere now, and somebody will come up to me and say, are you Mrs. Burns, my old third grade teacher? <laughs> and sometimes it's somebody that I can look right at, or sometimes, <laughs> like this evening, where I say, yes, I'm Mrs. Burns. <laughs> I love this school. I love the parents. They were such a big part of it for us all. And I love all the class that I taught. Thank you so much. Jenny, we'd also like to honor you and give you a, a rosary and also an engraved brick that will be placed in the Hall of Fame section between the church and the school. And you also will receive two tickets to the auction coming up in April, so don't be a stranger. Please, come back. Our next honoree tonight is Marilyn Marlowe. Uh, Mrs. Marlowe taught second grade at St. Elizabeth's. And actually, I think I am standing right in her classroom right here. I know it well. I had Miss Marlowe for my entire second grade education. I never had anybody else. But Miss Marlowe is loved for her beauty inside and out. And I will confirm inside and out. Mrs. Marlowe always looked beautiful. Hair was done nice, her nails, her makeup, dressed very nice. I know she even, I think, had some fashion tips for other teachers. And I will uh, even say that they confirm all second grade boys love to be around Miss Marlowe. <laughs> One parent, I think, even related the story to uh, his son would try and uh, kind of flirt with Miss Marlowe by uh, making different animal sounds and trying to have her guess which animal I am now. So, but she was she was great. We really, really loved her. She uh, she was a, a fun teacher, um, very compassionate too. She would actually make sure everybody on the playground was playing fair. Nobody was getting picked on. Um, make sure everything was was uh, fun for everybody. But she also had a, you know, a strict side to her, um, and uh, unfortunately I brought that out a couple times, and I can vividly remember um, talking, I guess, during class. I didn't think I was talking during class, but I guess I was, and you know, out that would come it was Mr. Quarter, and it, it was like a sword, I mean, with the fingernails and the whole thing, it was like seven feet long, I thought. And, and it was assertive. I mean, the entire class stopped, we froze, we're like, oh, no. I'm like, yep, it's me. And it was quick, quick, 
boom, that was it. No words, we just knew. Pack the toad up, walk to the front of the class, and let's sit next to Miss Marlowe for the rest of the day. But she was a lot of fun, and we really enjoyed having her, and it's a great time in my life. But here to say a few more memories about her is Miss Tony Walters and Debbie Bergmark. I don't know if a lot of you know this, but Marilyn is suffering from MS, and she's not able to get out of bed anymore. So that's why she's not here. I spoke with my aunt this morning, and my aunt Connie is 92, 93 years old, and she takes care of Marilyn every day, and always will. And I asked her what I should say, and she said, "Keep it, keep it short." <laughs> and that's just the way they are. Very humble. And I am very honored and humbled to talk about Marilyn. When I was a young girl, um, Aunt Connie and Marilyn and my grandmother and my Uncle Paul lived up the street from us. And Mare was the cheerleader, the homecoming queen. Um, she always had, was in for a good joke. But I used to sit on my friend's steps on 74th Street, and she would come down, walk down, and go hang out over at Tim Scanlon's house across the street. And I would just sit and stare at her and admire the person that she was because she was so filled with life. And so much fun to be around and at family reunions, we always wound up laughing because Marilyn always had a funny joke to tell somebody or the joke was actually on you. My poor Uncle Paul took a lot of her heat. <laughs> but as time went on, Mare went to Hogan High School she was the um, cheerleader there, always doing cartwheels in, my, in the backyard. And she would make my dad come out and watch her and spot her, I think, even a couple of times. Then she was prom queen, and she glowed. She just glowed. Well, she went to UMKC, got her teaching's degree, got her teacher's degree, and Shawnee Submission School District wanted to hire her. Well, she found out through Mary Lee Cruel that there was a job opening here in St. Elizabeth's in the second grade. And Marilyn, who also was an alumni of St. Elizabeth's, took that job. And she worked here for 17 years. Her first year, I was in the eighth grade here. <coughs> and like Bob was saying, I used to love to watch her dress because she could dress and she had the best shoes. And I think my sister Anne gets that from her too. <laughs> but Marilyn, there are three words that I can describe Marilyn. She was filled with faith, had a great devotion to the Blessed Mother, would attend every Tuesday night Our Lady of Perpetual Health Novenas. I remember she would come down and pick up my grandmother who would stay with us on Tuesdays, and they'd go and say the Novenas. I think she really brought that Catholic faith to her students and taught them First Communion and Reconciliation and what a teacher they had in that. Her faith in the Blessed Mother, I think, is what's getting through her now, um, I also remember that she was teaching here, and she was starting to fall, and nobody could really figure out what was going on, and finally she was diagnosed with MS and was in a wheelchair and taught school, and it just got to be too much. So now I'm going to turn it over to Tony, who's with Marilyn quite a bit now. Thank you. It wasn't just the kids that wanted to check Marilyn's outfit. All the teachers had to check what she was wearing for the week, and uh, it became kind of a, a fun and a joke. But she was a delightful, a beautiful, bright, cheerful, loving person, as well as a teacher. I didn't know Marilyn so much as a teacher because uh, she was in the primary, and uh, uh, I got to know more of the uh, uh, older, other teachers. Anyway, uh, so I knew Marilyn through the school, but um, when I uh, first uh, made contact with her years later in the 80s, uh, only to find out um, that she had had these several falls that Debbie was talking about. Uh, Debbie and Marilyn being cousins, she knew more of the youth than I knew. I know more of the latter years of her life. But when she um, turned down the job of being a sponsor for RCIA, which I was working in, uh, she explained that uh, she had several falls and her multiple sclerosis was 
starting to uh, interfere with her life. But uh, she tried to do quite a bit and managed to teach for a few years that way, but the wheelchair finally came into the picture and it made it much harder. Um, and Marilyn loved teaching and the, the thought of having to quit was really hard for her. But over the last 15 and a half years, uh, my association with Marilyn has uh, been seeing her progress more with her multiple sclerosis and being more uh, dependent on the wheelchair. And in fact, at one point in church, there were three people in a the wheelchair. There was Marsha Woods in the front row and Marilyn in the middle row on the, on the east side and uh, Jim Walters on the last. So we had a whole aisle there for the whole wheelchair. So, uh, but she needed her wheelchair very much to get around and eventually lost her ability to be independent even with the wheelchair. So now her mother, who's in her 90s, is still caring for her and it impresses me. But the, the reason I'm sharing my aspect of my life with Marilyn is that uh, I'm a Eucharistic minister, so I have the opportunity to uh, meet with them and go over and take communion to both of them. Um, Marilyn now um, has deteriorated quite a bit uh, in the sense that she has lost her eyesight and uh, isn't able to communicate. I don't know sometimes if she understands. I usually tell her stories about how we teachers, when we get together, periodically once a month and uh, I share with her all the events that's going on. Um, I don't know how much she's grasping but it's our means of communication. And uh, she and her mother uh, Connie always find it so beneficial and humbling to be able to have the opportunity to have communion brought to the home. We share scripture, share a little bit of conversation about the readings and then, um, like, uh, I think this is a wonderful Italian tradition, I get a lunch out of it. <laughs> and I have to stay, it's wonderful, but uh, at this point, Marilyn isn't able to partake in the luncheon with us because she is really uh, bedridden and uh, her mother has to really do everything for her. So I pray for both of them, they're both beautiful women. They both need our prayers. Uh, they take each day as the Lord wills. And even with all their limitations, they uh, still manage to get through each day with all the necessities that are uh, needed uh, for getting through the physical aspects of life. So it's been a great privilege for me to bring this spiritual part into their lives. And they're so appreciative to be able to have Jesus in their midst and to share the word. So they don't want us to feel sorry for them, not at all. But they do appreciate your prayers and uh, pray that uh, God can help them get through each day that God gives to them. Thank you.